And now we'll talk about the MQI decode utility. This is a program to help application developers and administrators who need to turn numbers into the corresponding MQI constants, for example to find out what open options have been used. These numbers might be found from a range of places. An MQ trace will show all the values passed by an application, authorization events show which options have been requested and failed, application activity events also show all the MQI options. So we want to turn those numbers into the symbols without having to look through all the header files. MQID code provides a mechanism to do that from the command line. Here's one example. Assume I found the number in an MQI trace. Because this comes from an MQ open call, which I've seen earlier in the trace, I know that the symbolic constants in the MQI begin with MQOO, and that's given as the minus P parameter to, to the decoder. You can see several things from this decoding. One is that the application appears to have requested an invalid option that cannot be decoded. Another is that sometimes an MQI constant can have more than one symbolic reference. In this case, the resolve local queue and resolve local topic definitions are the same value. That doesn't matter in the MQI because the context tells the queue manager which is meant. Some MQI constants are bit fields being added together into a single integer. You'll normally find these in the options field in a structure. This MQOO example shows that. MQID code assumes by default that the number you enter is such a bit field. Depending on the source of the information you are trying to decode, you may get the value in either decimal or hex format. MQID code can handle both. The 0x format shows you're typing a hex value, otherwise it assumes decimal. Many other MQI constants are enumerations, the most obvious and well known are the MQRC reason codes, but there's already a product provided tool to convert those, the MQRC program. So let's look at another example, the environment value passed to an API exit. The MQXE constants tell an exit something about the caller of the MQI, whether it's a regular application or some special cases. The minus E flag tells MQI decode to treat this value as coming from an enumerated set. You can see the difference between the enumeration and the bit field processing if I omit the minus E flag. And in this case, it gives a misleading answer if you didn't understand the difference. Clearly here, the application can only be running in a single environment, so the bit field interpretation doesn't make any sense. One further feature of MQID code is that it can search related ranges. Normally the prefix, or minus P parameter, is treated as if there's an underscore immediately afterwards. This separates different sets of numbers that might begin with the same letters. For example, MQRC and MQRCCF. But some of the MQI ranges are related, and using the minus N option can help searching those in a single go. For example, you may know that a value relates to a character attribute of an object, but these are assigned in several sets. Using the minus N flag says we need to search all values that begin with these characters, and not assume the next character is an underscore. One shortcut that removes the need to type two characters on the command line, as all MQI constants begin with MQ, you, can't, you can not use them in a prefix and they'll be added automatically. One comment on the MQI decode implementation. The program is essentially a simple one, being a wrapper around the mqconstants.lookup method in MQ's Java classes. So because there's no real knowledge of the MQI in the support pack code, it will automatically decode new values when you install new versions of MQ without itself needing to be updated. You just need to make sure the class path referenced in the invoking script or batch file points at the newer jar files. Finally, for something a bit silly, try to work out what the following command is going to do. Thank <laughs> you.